Hey everyone, Hamada here with another video for Revit 101. And today I'm going to be talking about the architecture tab, specifically the build section under the architecture tab. So let's go ahead and get started with walls. So in order for me to create a wall, I'm going to click on this icon right over here. And as you can see, the entire interface has changed. The first thing, as you can see, the cursor has changed shape because it's indicating that currently I'm in drawing mode and I'm able to draw. So let's go ahead and try that. I'm using my mouse left side button to click to start the wall and then wherever else I click is going to just continue making the wall. And as you can see, once we get into a corner, if I click somewhere else right now, Revit will do a really good job at just trying to adjust and accommodate to any shape of corner that I give it to. So what exactly is happening right here? Well, in a 2D format, as you can see, we can see a um, few walls that are all connected together. However, I wonder how that would look like if we go to 3D. So if you go to 3D view, as you can see, Revit created those walls exactly as we would expect. So how did Revit actually know the height of the wall? And that brings me back to what I mentioned in the previous video, which is properties. So let's go ahead and select these walls. As you can see that right over here, I have what we call a property panel, which I mentioned is very, very important inside of Revit. And I usually break down properties into two sections. Number one is your type properties. So whatever happening in this section is all related into types. And then the one below here is what I like to call instant properties. So everything that has to do with instantly whatever it is that you're creating at the moment or whatever it is that you have under selections. Like for example, all these walls are currently selected. So whatever I do to these properties are going to affect only these walls that I have selected. Or if I were to do that before actually drawing the walls, whatever it is I'm going to draw also be affected. So as you can see, instant properties has things like my uh, my wall base and my wall height. So the top portion of the wall is indicating where exactly that wall is going to end at. So currently it starts from level one, which when we saw in 3D that is actually true. You can see, even if I look at it on the side, you can see it starts exactly from level one, but it doesn't end at level two. In fact, it goes all the way to 8,000 mm, which could be fine if it is exactly what I want to do. Um, however, let's go ahead and change that. So in order for me to go up into level two, which is at 4,000 mm, I could go ahead and change this number to 4,000, or I could go and change this option instead of unconnected to be level two. And that will automatically set it to 4,000 mm. All right, let's go ahead and do that one more time. I'm gonna delete all these and create another wall. And then before I draw the wall, I'm actually going to set the properties, which is actually the proper practice that I always advise people to do, is that set the properties first, then you go ahead and start drawing. And that is actually very crucial when it comes to staircase, which I'll show you later on. So let's go ahead and choose level two, and I'm gonna create a wall that looks like this. And then let's go ahead and check how that looks like in our elevation. So as you can see in the elevation view, I have a wall that starts from level one all the way to level two, and that is exactly what I want. So let's go ahead and add a bit more into that. I'm going to add another wall, and I want it to be instead of going from level one to level two, I want it to go to unconnected, but I'll keep this at 4,000. And let's go ahead and draw another one. And now, just looking at it from, from this plan view right now, um, would you say that there'll be a difference between these two walls? And the answer is visually, no. They look exactly the same. Both of the walls start at level one, and both of them ends at 4,000 mm from level one, which is, is at level two. However, technically, both of them are very, very different. For example, this particular wall, I have programmed for it to be always going back to level two. So if I go ahead and change level two's height, for example, we had a different size of beams, and then I'm going to change the height from level to level. So let's go ahead and change that into 4,200. As you can see, this particular wall already jumped all the way to level two because that's what it knows. It doesn't, it didn't matter to it that it was 4,000 mm. It just knows that it goes from level one all the way to level two. However, this one didn't know any better. It just kept it at 4,000, which could be the case. Actually, sometimes you want your walls to stay at a particular height. However, 
uh, knowing what you want to do and doing it is very, very important inside of Revit because Revit could help you produce a lot of drawings very, very fast and very, very efficient. However, if you don't understand how the software operates, you're going to have a very difficult time trying to achieve efficiency inside of Revit. All right, now let's go back into our floor plan. Now that we've talked about instant properties, let's go ahead and talk about type properties. So let's go ahead and select this wall. And as you can see, if I click on the wall type, which it says currently basic wall generic 200 mm. By the way, both of them are actually using the same type. As you can see, when I select both of them, it still shows generic 200 mm, even though they have different instant properties, but they both can share the same type. So what I could do is I could change this type. There are plenty of different types right over here. And if I go ahead and change one of the types, for example, into generic 300 mm, you can see that they got in a little thicker right here. So both of them currently are still the same type, which is generic 300. I could go ahead and change one of them to be different type than the other, that's okay. So this one maybe is 200 and this one is 300. And what I can do is I can actually build my own type. For example, I want to build another type based on the generic types. So let's go back and try generic 200. I want to build another type based on this generic 200 mm. I wanted to make it generic 150 mm, for example, because they don't have that option right here. So what I could do, I could click on edit property and this uh, panel will come up. This is where you can control all different parameters and properties for any type. And this would be more or less the same for many, many other components. So I'm going to try and demonstrate it more in details, but just so you know, it's going to be exactly the same for most of the other families. So what I want to do is I want to build another type based on this type. So what I'm going to do is instead of changing the number right over here, I want to maintain this type, I'm going to duplicate it. So think of this as this uh, generic 200 mm was actually my template and I'm going to, based on this template, I'm going to create another template where I'm going to edit a little bit. So. Uh, this, by the way, is just a name, so I could go ahead and change that 150 mm, and that is just still uh, just a name. As you can see, the thickness is still width here, it still says 200. So how do I change this width? I can actually go into Edit Structure. So now that we are editing the structure, as you can see, we have just one structure layer, which is 200 mm in thickness and I'm just gonna go ahead and change that into 150 mm. I'm not gonna change anything else. I'll come back to this and show you exactly what this thing actually means. Let's click OK. And as you can see, the width now changed to 150. And if I click OK again, you can see that currently we have a new type that is generic 150 mm, and we're still keeping the generic 200 mm. So this one could have been um, still maintaining the same 200 mm, and we still have a new type. Uh, now, what would happen actually if I have, let's say, a um, few walls, so let's go ahead and create another one that will be generic 150 mm, and I'll add a few other walls right over here. So all of these share, all, all of them share the same type, but maybe they won't be sharing the same uh, instant properties, which they do at this at this moment, but it doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and just select one of them, and let's go into edit type, and currently, if I were to do the same edit I did and change uh, this one to maybe 100 mm, as you can see, what I currently have is just one of the walls selected, not all of them. But when I click OK, because I changed the entire type, as you can see, all of them have been updated because all of them still follow this generic 150 mm. And by the way, don't get confused by the name. It's, it, this is just a name. I could go ahead and rename this, let's say, called generic... Um, the modmin. Okay, so that 150 didn't mean anything. It's just this width number. So whenever I change this, let's say 500, for example, as you can see, all of them will change together because they all belong to the same type. While this one didn't really get any much effect because it didn't use the same type. If I go ahead and change that to generic, the modmin wall, you can see that that too also will become um, 500. All right, I hope that actually clarifies the difference between type properties and instant properties. All right, let's go back and further edit this wall. So I'm gonna go and edit type for the modmin wall and structure, edit structure. So back to this panel, basically what a structure assembly allows us to do is 
to define different layers of our structure. So for example, currently I only have one layer, which is this uh, 500 mm thickness without any materials. What I could do is let's go ahead and actually make this one slightly uh, thinner. So it's 100 mm and I'm going to insert um, more layers. So I'm gonna click on this button here, insert, and that will allow me to have another structure, which I'm going to make it 20 mm for example. And as you can see, both of them currently don't have any different materials on them. Um, let's go ahead and add one more and then we can add more materials. So in order for me to make it all wrap up to 150, I'm gonna make this one 30. And what I want to do is actually sandwich this 100 mm layer between these two right over here. And the way I could do that is basically by shifting this layer down here. And I could do that by clicking on down and that would just bring this layer down. And let's go ahead and add some materials into this. So the way you could actually do that is by clicking on this material right over here. And there's this little box with three dots. If you click on that, it's going to open our material library. So this is the material browser. And if you're using the same template file that I have mentioned in the previous video, you should have access to all these materials. So let's go ahead and make this one. Which layer was this one? This was the 30 mm layer. So let's go ahead and make this one maybe ceramic. So the way I'm gonna do that is just by going into filter and looking for a ceramic. So as you can see, the ceramic tiles has a surface pattern with a foreground that looks like this and the cut pattern for it looks like this. So that looks good, click okay. All right, and then the middle layer, I wanna make it brick. So you can actually use the search bar to look for that. All right, so brick. And then the last one, Let's go with gypsum. Okay, looks good. Let's click okay. And let's see how that looks like. As you can see, absolutely no different. And the reason for that is because I am not turning on my detail mode. So if I click on this icon down here, if I click on that, I can actually change my detail level into fine. And that would actually allow Revit to show me the details. So currently we see all the different layers that we have defined. And if you go even to 3D view, you can see that the surface pattern is actually showing on some of these. One of the walls is not showing the surface pattern on the, on the side as the others. And the reason for that is that it's maybe I drew this from upside down or downside up. And the way you could actually fix this is basically by flipping it from one side to, not, to the other. And there's a shortcut, a very, very neat shortcut that I always use, which is basically the spacebar. Spacebar is going to allow you to flip any object around. So this is one of the frequent shortcuts that I always use. And there are three frequent shortcuts that I'll tell you about. So the first one is spacebar. Spacebar will just make you flip things all around. All right, let's go back. So now that we have created few walls, let's go ahead and delete these. I'm going to go ahead and create few that looks like a structure. So it allows us to apply our next component, which would be doors. So something like this. All right. Okay. So let's go into the next component, which as I mentioned is doors. So if I click on door, as you can see, it's very similar to walls. You can choose one of these uh, types. In fact, all components inside of Revit would be very, very similar to this. So let's go ahead and go with this wall, which is a uh, single flash with 915 mm by 2134 mm. Okay, so the way I can actually create a door, you can see it's not allowing me to create a door anywhere because a door would require a host. Basically, you can't have a door that is floating in the middle of the air. It needs to be hosted on a wall. So if we go nearby any of these walls, you can see that it's showing me that you could actually create a door right over here. So let's go ahead and create a door here. And what I could do is basically flip my mouse cursor between uh, the different sides of the wall and that would allow me to have the opening on each side. I could also use the spacebar key to actually flip this uh, door around. So the side of the door. So you see the spacebar key is very, very handy. So let's go ahead and create a door that is facing this side. And that's it, we have a door now. Let's go ahead and see how that looks like in 3D. All right, fantastic. So we have our door. Let's go ahead and check out the type properties that we have for doors. 
And something I want to mention is that Revit doesn't just allow you to put only this uh, few doors. This is what's available in the template file that I'm sharing with you guys. However, there are ways to bring out different types of doors in which I will be discussing very soon. So let's go ahead and create our own type. So if we click on edit type, you can see it's very straightforward. You have all these different parameters that you can change. So I'm going to first of all duplicate this. And yeah, again, I'm going to call this one the modmin door. All right, and then let's go ahead and change it to much more appropriate numbers. So for example, and then 950. Okay, that is the door I want to create. So as you can see, it automatically updated to that shape. And if we go into our plan view, it looks, uh, it looks appropriate. Okay. Next we have is window and window is exactly the same as doors. So I choose the window that I have. The only thing is that we have a cell height. Actually doors also have cell heights. Basically this is the distance between the window and the floor. So let's go ahead and add few windows. And let's choose maybe another type. All right, let's have a few of these right over here. All right, so many windows. Okay, let's see how that looks like. Okay, fantastic. Next we have is components. So basically components are whatever doesn't have an icon right over here will fall under a component. So if we click on components, you can see, for example, a desk. And as you can see, we don't have a button that says desk and we won't have a button for every single object that a building could have because there's simply just too many. So let's go ahead and add this desk. I'm gonna use my plan view to do that. And then of course I could use the shortcut I told you, which is spacebar to add or orient the desk around uh, the plan. Okay, let's go ahead and see how that looks like. Uh, it looks like a regular desk. Okay, so there are a few components that we have in the template file. I guess the parking space, few trees. However, as I mentioned, you can actually load these families and I will show you where to do that in the future video. And then I will discuss one more before I end this video because it's getting too long is actually columns. And columns is a bit tricky here because if you click on this little arrow right over here, you can see that we have two options for creating columns. One is structural column and the other one is architectural column. And by default, if you just click on column, it will actually be doing a structural column, which for now I just want you to use the architectural column. So let's go ahead and click on that. And as you can see, we have three different uh, types and we can go ahead and create our own. As you might have guessed, it's very, very repetitive. Most of the components around Revit basically operates the exact same way. So right over here, we have an option to change the depth and change the width, and we can even change the material. So let's go ahead and do that. And first I'm gonna duplicate this one. And again, why not? The mod min column. And we change that into, let's say 200 by 200. And I will change the material into concrete. Okay, and okay. So now let's go into level one and let's add our column. So as you can see, we can see a little bit of the concrete material that we chose. So now that we have our column that looks like this. All right, that's about it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next video where we talk about the rest of the build section. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you again tomorrow.